All right, and uh, welcome to another guest. And this is uh, a guest that we have some familiarity with. And, uh, and I think since we last talked, she was talking about playing in a huge venue at Lancaster County, Pennsylvania. But I think she's starting to go a little bigger now, Troy. So I'm not sure. I'm not sure she's going to uh, be able to fit her tour bus in Lancaster anymore. Uh, I don't so. think so, and especially not the the fan following she has. No. They won't be able. They won't be able to fit there. That's Taylor. Right. Taylor Marie again. Wagner. Hey, how's it going? Hey guys, how are y'all? Good, good. It has We're doing been over a but... year, hasn't it? It has. It's kind of crazy. I was thinking about that earlier. Like, I was like, wow. I was like, it seems like not that long ago I did an interview with them. And then I was like, whoa. Because I started looking at what songs I'd released when and then now. And I was like, it's been a, over a year. It's crazy. <laughs> wow. I'm yeah, it's, it's been quite a while, Taylor, and uh, I guess in the meantime, um, I guess we're happy to still be in your graces because you've kind of <laughs> hitting some big songs here lately, girl. I hope so. It's, it's been <laughs> here lately, I've just had a lot of cool stuff going on, and I, I you know, I'm just, I, I'm enjoying it, um, every minute of it, and just trying to soak it all in and have, have as much fun as possible. Yeah, and if I remember correctly, the last time you um, talked with us, um, you had mentioned that you're you sort of have a bigger passion for writing than you do actually singing, and uh, and it's that's starting to like rear its head, you know, to the point where we're like, oh wow, look what she's doing with this writing gig. Yeah, it's it's been a wild wild ride. Um, the first part of last year, I well. I think it was May of last year. I signed my first publishing deal there in Los Angeles. And when they offered me that deal, it was like, it, it was one of those moments. It's like, wow, I wanted to sign a deal like this my whole life. I was like, wow, like you want me to write for you? Like, this is really cool. Um, are you sure? Like when they <laughs> like reached out, it was kind of funny. I thought the man when he called to say he wanted to talk to me was a telemarketer. <laughs> <So> <laughs> true story and I'm like talking to my what and so I had actually um had sent some songs over to a friend and I didn't know he had been working for this uh publishing company and he had shared it with his boss and his boss wanted to talk to me and I was like California I was like okay and I was like hello and he's like hi is this you know Taylor Wagner and I was like it depends who's this <laughs> <laughs> and when he said who it was at first I was like yeah right I was like okay <laughs> and then I felt really cute I was like oh my gosh I was like great I was like I got off to a great start I was like I have to be honest I thought you were a telemarketer yeah, you, you should have told him were... you're like you know what I don't want any car insurance get away <laughs> well you know I call you all the time now about your car's extended warranty and I honestly thought that's what it was yeah that's that's pretty good um those those extended car warranty things are out of control. Uh, oh my gosh, they're calling from everywhere. They even call from numbers like that look like a number that you know for some odd reason. Mm -hmm. Like, yes, Sim very similar and close to your phone numbers. It's wild. Yeah, I don't know how they're doing all this, whatever. But um, so um, as we're talking to you, Taylor, you had a a song that just got pretty big on the iTunes charts, huh? Yeah, it went to number fifteen on country charts, and it went to number 82 all genre and wow. it's currently still growing on radio for us um I know Jeremy was messaging me yesterday and today and he's like hey it's become like a daily thing like I, I kind of wild I've never I don't know I'm just absorbing it all in but each day like this many stations added us today and I'm like oh wow like okay and that's he's, incredible we've been checking billboard and I'm like wow I never thought I'd be getting to check billboard magazine <laughs> like open it showed up like this is kind of crazy so yeah and yeah of course and we're talking of course. about jeep girl um who you co you co-wrote with jeremy Rowe, yeah. and uh and jeremy Rowe, how did you how'd you link up with him and like what was like what what fascinated you about writing for him um so actually during the pandemic i've met a lot of artists through stuff like this at zoom mm -hmm. yeah. Um, and they would reach out and he and I just started messaging and he was like, Hey, would you want to write with me sometime? And I was like, sure, I'd, I'd love to. And so he knew that I also had a Jeep and he did as well. Um, he had released a song called Jeep thing. And I saw, I saw it done pretty well, um, on TikTok, he has an incredible following. It's kind of crazy to me how many people will go and just like his video will have thousands of you in a, in a few minutes. And I'm like, oh, okay. And so 
when he reached out, I was like, sure. And I was, so he had this idea about a song for a Jeep girl. And at first he was thinking, um, if I remember it correctly, like, he was like, well, you're a Jeep girl. You can write a song for you. And I was like, well, what if you write a song about your Jeep girl? And so it just kind of uh. went, we had this ideas and stuff from that. And I'm really excited about it. Um, I'm excited to write more with him. He's a great guy. Um, hopefully yeah. he'll come here with you guys because he's awesome. That would yeah. be great. We'd, we'd, we'd yeah, love we'll to, have chat to reach out. Yeah, we'll definitely have to reach out. When I, I'm kind of curious about when you guys wrote that, like from the time you guys first started talking until everything was kind of all buttoned up and it got put out there for the public. How, how long of a process was that about? Um, gosh, maybe if probably close to six months, maybe a little less. It, it wasn't a terribly long amount of time. It might have even been less than that. I'm honestly not entirely sure on the exact amount of time. Mm -hmm. um, I have to say though, it's kind of, it's been interesting um, with stuff with the pandemic and everything, meeting people and writing virtually. I used to always write just in person. So it has been different, but I immediately knew I wanted to write more with him. That was the first song me and him ever wrote together. And we wrote it in less than an hour. I mean, it was like, it was easy. Like, this is great. And I even told him, I was like, this is what I want to do. Like, and he was wow. like, what do you, I was like, that just came so easy. And he was so easy to work with and write. And I mean, anytime you can sit down, I, you know, some people say like the, the good ones are wrote real fast. Well, mm -hmm. I mean, if you count how much me and him are probably just talking to one another, <laughs> I have to say maybe 30 minutes was spent on the song. Like it's nuts. And so I like teased him. I was like, best 30 minutes. I said, you know, I, I got you out of there before lunch. It was like best hour of our life. We've spent a while about it now. Um, just because it, who would like, I, we were shocked. We woke up and he was like, Taylor, somebody said we're on iTunes. And I was like, <laughs> yeah, you released the song on there. He's like, no, like we're on the charts. And I was like, yeah, okay. And I go and check and I was like, this is wild. So you need That's to crazy. start How believing people. I mean, geez, it sounds like you just don't believe anyone. <laughs> it's just shocking like you just i don't know like I, it's, wait what what was there a lot of push to get that song out there or did that kind of just kind of grow on its own or what do you kind I, of attribute that to the jeep community they, those people are awesome um <laughs> groups and they, i looked and they were sharing it in there and then all these people are downloading it and it just became like a domino effect of all these different people and who would have thought there are a lot of Jeep groups on Facebook. I have, I've learned a lot and guys, I'm getting like fully educated on Jeep tree lately. Santa Claus brought me a, um, 90, 97 TJ and it's a project because it's still, you know, it won't go in fifth year. We're working on it and stuff, but we've got nice new soft top for it. And just me wow. and my husband informed me, I bought a play toy, <laughs> um, but I wanted <laughs> I was like, the Jeep girl needs a new play toy. So he's like, what did you get? And I was like, a Jeep. And he was like, what? The, so. the, I'm assuming since this was such a success for you that you guys are planning to write more together. Yes, absolutely. And I'm really looking forward to it. Is now, there anything? In regards, oh, I'm sorry. In regards to uh, Jeep girl, uh, did you guys ever think about reaching out to like the actual Jeep corporation and, yes. and seeing if they would do a commercial with that song or? That is in the works, hopefully. So oh. asked he has uh he has talked out talked to them and it gets been over and we've talked to head of marketing, we've got over to, to some other people. So we uh we shall see. Oh wow, that that's, is that, awesome. That's probably gotta be a whole different thing, right? To go from hearing your song being played on all kinds of streaming formats, even on the radio in some markets, but to hear it on a national television audience thing, yeah. that would that would be mind blowing, wouldn't it? yeah it was <laughs> it was pretty wild uh to just to know like that was even like I was he calls me up to do like so guess who's considering using our song <laughs> and I was like what wow and so now he, did you guys reach out to them or did you reach or did you reach I'm entirely sure on that that was on Jeremy's end um okay. but I do know he's been in contact with them and I mean it we're excited well, so we'll see what happens who knows but I'm hopeful of I think, it's, I think it's pretty cool. Yeah, without a doubt. I'm thinking, Troy, that maybe when we're watching the Super Bowl, we'll see the commercial pop up and be like, hey, <laughs> hey, that song sounds familiar. If they have a Super Bowl of a Jeep ad during, during the Super Bowl, if yeah, you know what I'm saying here. If they have a commercial of Jeep during the Super Bowl, 
Uh, what are those things going for? Like four million a half, thirty seconds or something like that? Like, uh, oh, they're more I, than four million right now. That's insane. Like, so if yeah. something like that happens, I hope she gets a good cut of that. <laughs> <laughs> Even a small cut is good. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so yeah, of course we're talking with Taylor Marie Wagner. You can find her on Facebook, on Instagram. You can find all her music on the streaming sites, uh, YouTube. I guess she said that's how your dad listens to you, right? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so the songwriting, that's, you know, that's a big thing for you, but you also have some new music you're working on, right? You know, that you're recording personally. Yes. Um, so we're currently working on, um, we've got a couple songs that we've gotten written. We're working on some more stuff, but, um, I wanted to, I was sitting down with uh, my co-writers at Big Tent there in Nashville, and I said to them, I said, you know, they started joking about everything that was in a country song and things that make up a country song. And I was like, you know, it would be kind of funny, but I kind of want to put all that into a song. And I was like, I don't necessarily want to make fun of it, but in a one way I kind of do. Yeah. And so I, the title, the song hook is there's uh ain't nothing wrong with putting a little more country in your country song and it's like the song starts to give y'all an idea finger licking fried chicken <laughs> and so it's like different little funny and I mean you know I was like oh you gotta mention their truck you gotta mention all oh, their just different little things and my, my micro writers they're like they're like oh my goodness Taylor I was like don't forget his dog and they're just like so I was just being really goofy with it and we got done with it and I was like I kind of like this yeah and I was and so um, that's one of the songs we're going to be doing. Another one is called Tumbleweed. And when I was out in Vegas, um, my husband and I drove around and I got to see a lot. We went into um, from Nevada into Arizona and Utah. And I love national park trips. So we were just mm -hmm. going to get everything while we were out there. But I had never seen tumbleweeds and I saw tumbleweed. But the song is not about a tumbleweed. It's using it as a kind of a reference about a not a guy so but okay. I, uh, not a cowboy so <laughs> I wrote that and uh that's gonna be one of the ones we're working on and I also wrote one um called cowboy for Christmas and ah. so I'm really excited about that one um I got to play that one there at the NFR and uh that was really cool I actually got the idea when they sent over the invitation mm -hmm. they called the exhibit area that you're playing um the cowboy christmas and i saw that and it was like cowboy christmas i was like well what if i want a cowboy for christmas so i'm like jokingly saying it to my boss and i'm like then so some of the girls are sitting around and i was like well he's got to have on some wrangler jeans and we're just like going on with this stuff about uh, what's going on and my and finally i look over and david's typing and he was like oh yes here we go he's like well girls i think we wrote the song <laughs> comments about what you want in your man i was like do what <laughs> Hey, you know what? If ACDC can do it for Mistress for Christmas, why can't you do Cowboy for Christmas, right? Right, exactly. <laughs> so are you, are you trying to one-up David Allen Coe here with the perfect country western song here? Or I don't know. I do love David Allen Coe. I cover him all. <laughs> Pretty much. No. Okay, okay. So do we have a little bit more involved with uh, the, the perfect country western song here is as you said it what is it put a little more country in your what is it is it put a little more country in your country song or yeah put a little more country in your song okay it, it's goofy like blue jean ripping um sweet tea slip in front porch sitting different oh songs. yeah 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 this is good you know the guy's got his coon hound he's got his <laughs> redneck hillbilly deluxe there's just different little things and i wanted just little funny saying and phrasing but I always have this joke that you can listen to a lot of country music on the radio and it's got a lot in common and so I was joking with them there I said you know I was like what if we just put that in a song and say like oh look this is all in there and it was supposed to just be funny but we got done and I was like yes this is the song so and it's just upbeat um I I really enjoy playing it for crowds uh, people just getting them clapping singing along we have a lot of giddy ups and yeehaws and there's a lot of audience participation you gotta you gotta sing both those and just have a good old time <laughs> that's that fantastic sounds, yeah that sounds like a perfect uh, rodeo song and you were talking about you know maybe playing a little bit of uh, a rodeo tour I guess yeah I hope so um I, you know I I'm really excited um 
some of the stuff like I've gotten to in the last couple of years, I, so I was a barrel racer. I think you guys know that from when mm-hmm. we were before. And so just in the last few years, I've gotten to play Cheyenne Frontier Days and then getting to play the NFR um, for Cowboy Christmas. That was wild to me. Um, just some of the things, I mean, I never expected. I thought that would be something I'd be getting a phone call for and the opportunities that have been presented to me since playing at the NFR. Um, we were there live with uh, RFD TV and the Cowboy Channel. And so wow. I like to tell parents, the funniest thing was when I got invited, I was like, mom, dad, I got invited to play the NFR. And they're like, yeah, okay. And I'm like, no, really? Like I'm going to go now and playing at the NFR. Like this is kind of nuts. It's pretty crazy um, to get that experience, but my husband was excited that I thought, you know, being the cowgirl that I am, I'm like, yeah, I'm going to be in like the Western wear section. No, I was in the Rocky Mountain Elk Foundation section, which those guys are amazing. And I was in the hunting part of the whole area. So he was just thrilled. He was like, this is perfect. And I was like, sure it is, honey. I'm sure it is. (laughs) That's awesome. Yeah. So what, um, I, I wanted to ask you one more question quick on some of these songs you're working on. When, when can we expect to hear these? Um, well, we're in the studio currently working on them. Um, we tracked, uh, put a little more country in your country song not too long ago. We've gotten vocals down and waiting on getting some instrumentation added. You know, it, it talks about, uh, fiddles and steel guitars and some other stuff in the song. So you couldn't release it without those in there. Um, so we're working on getting that added. Um, we're hoping to get that out probably in the next few months is what my goal is for that. Um, I think that's going to end up being, I say thanks because I changed my mind and so did, so did my team. But so far, I think the single um, that we're going to release to radio and uh, hopefully, hopefully it does well. I don't know. Um, I'll let the listeners decide if like, hope, I hope they do. I'm, I'm sure it'll be fine. Um, you, you've, you've been on a roll lately, so I have no doubt that it'll, uh, do as well as as you've been doing um yeah we started a little spotify list with some of the artists that we've talked to on the show so i'll be sure to look out for those as we see them release on social media and stuff and add them to our spotify list as well so Thank you. yeah absolutely so taylor marie wagner uh, again you can find her on facebook instagram uh, youtube all the streaming sites of, of music out there amazon apple music all that kind of fun stuff um so taylor um have you been able to get a chance to kind of go out there and, and do any type of touring? I know things were kind of really hunkered down there for you during the pandemic. Last time we talked to you, have you got a chance to go out there and kind of do anything since then? Yeah. Um, I've played some stuff. It has been, you know, different, but in the last few months, actually just going back, I got to play um, the listening room cafe, which is a really cool songwriters venue. I don't know um, if you guys ever go to Nashville. They also have a place there in Pigeon Forge. They're expanding on there. And it's just a really intimate setting um, for songwriters. And I absolutely enjoyed it. Um, That was somewhere I've always wanted to play. So I was really grateful for the invitation um, to do that. And then I got to, as I've told you guys, obviously the NFR. um, And hopefully, hopefully it's, it's looking like this year, um, I'm going to get to see a lot of places I've never been to and uh, a lot of states. My goal, I have always said I want to see all 50 states before I'm 50, but I'm already, I think, at like 34 or 35. And uh, if this year all works out, I will not be over 40. So I'm really 40 in the states covered. And so hopefully uh, everything everything works out. Uh, I'm really looking forward to it. Um, yeah. Definitely, definitely going out west a lot more. And uh, I'm I'm looking, I love it out West. Um, I'm obsessed with like Western and cactuses and all that just kind of thing, but (laughs) it's just how that, and you know, the funny thing is I am open. I will play anywhere. If someone wants to have me, let's, let's have a show. And, Mm -hmm. but it's been kind of cool to me how it's worked out that I've gotten to play some of the places that were like dream venues to me that I was like, yeah, okay. Yeah. They'll invite me. No, they won't. Like, and now it's like, oh, wow. Like they're actually inviting me. So it's, it's been kind of crazy. That's amazing. And uh, I always I'm always curious about like the songwriting process in itself, uh, because uh, I know you had talked about it. You know, this is more your passion than anything. And uh, I guess when it comes to the songwriting process, especially in today's day and age and today's era uh, and, you know, obviously, you know, I'm not asking you to tell me like numbers and whatnot, but like 
what like what constitutes you getting a paycheck as a songwriter uh like for example like like jeep girl you know how how's that process worked in regards to you getting your monetary value for it so a lot of times people immediately and this is said true for an artist or a songwriter um, i can say this and i have friends right now who have had billboard number ones on radio as both an artist and songwriter they won't see that money i have a friend people are like why are you still driving that to another this wasn't to me but they said it to another friend of mine she's had a couple number ones now on radio mm -hmm. they said why are you still driving that beat up car and she's like because it takes two it takes honestly for a songwriter and the artist themselves to see it's about two years to see money from a song oh wow um so i i tease now this uh last cut that i just found out that'll be my 10th so i'm like Phew, two years from now like because they've all kind of happened at once i'm like two years from now it'll be a lot better but um <laughs> so i was like okay I just hunker down for two years that's what i keep telling myself but yeah it takes uh it takes quite a while to see a check from a song as far as that goes now what will happen is that stuff gets divided up amongst the artists and then their publishing gets a percentage if they're with the publisher um but the publishers push the stuff for us so we're grateful for them so they i mean they earn it um sure. but they have put that on there um depending on what the percentages are like for jeremy and i it was just the two of us so that was split between us and then me and him's publishing and so as far as that goes um it, whenever it's streamed downloaded everything he and i just that's basically split half and half and a lot of people are like wait a minute because the difference is like the songwriters and the artists, as far as the song was streaming, different things for the most part, make the same amount of money as far as that goes. The difference is the artists themselves make their money in their touring or from their different things. And that's not part of the songwriter, obviously. Like it's just for the radio and the other. But that is uh, one of the big differences. But I always tell people when they see, they're like, well, that artist has had so much success. They must be loaded. I'm like, well, if they just had that success, you can guarantee they're waiting two years for that check to show up. And so it is. It's a little, a little wild to get the the wheels of music road turning. Um, but you know, it's it's very rewarding. Um, and I'm really excited about just the process and stuff. I have had a few cuts that are finally starting to come in and stuff. Uh, it's it's been rewarding. Um, so I'm looking forward to it. But it is kind of an interesting process how that works out because you could have so many people on one song from the different writers to there could be multiple publishers and different labels and there ends up sometimes you look at the list of a song and it's credits and the people and you go what in the world happened with this <laughs> and it's how many names are tossed in the hat that day but <laughs> wow <laughs> uh, that's incredible crazy yeah it, it, and it's this is my this is my spot howie where i'm going to try to tie in um former guests and such uh but uh no we just got done talking with uh the girls of diamond dixie have you heard of them taylor i have heard of them yeah okay and like i was just telling them i was like man it'd be so cool if we could get some of our people like you who you know is turning into be an excellent songwriter and somebody like them and you guys could all collab and be like hey you heard it all here from our show you know what i mean like <laughs> that'd be so cool so um i don't know if there's a way if you guys have ever been in touch with like them or anything but um you know if, if you're interested we can definitely hook you hook you up with somebody like that after the show and you guys can talk with each other and see if there's anything I, that you guys could work out together i would love um, that absolutely so I, I know you can't really divulge too much on what's going to happen with this tour that you want to go on I, w I will ask you this, if, if you can answer it. Um, do you have a date as to when this might be happening, if it happens? Um, well, it'll be various dates. Um, so, well, no, I, I know, but I mean, like, as soon as. Um, um, so right now, on my schedule, I start out, um, I'll be in Limestone, Tennessee, starting in March. And that's going to be my first few shows are, are going to be that way. And then um, I've got a few songwriters festivals for sure. Um, we're working on some more dates there with a the listening room um, with Nashville. And I'm working on some hopefully rodeo dates at some of the biggest rodeos I, uh, I have ever imagined. And it's, it's pretty wild. Um, and hoping and praying it from, I, I think they want me back, but I, it sounds like I might be able to be back at the NFR this upcoming year. And uh, I'm excited about that. And I'm basically, 
if everything goes well, I'm hopefully going to be kind of following that circuit of Cowboys on that uh, professional level and hmm. playing on the big stages. And uh, I, I don't know, it's just kind of wild, um, kind of wild. And hopefully some big stages in Nashville that I thought would only sometimes at some points in my career, I thought that might just be a dream or a wish. And sometimes now it's kind of like, wow, like that might actually be coming true. And so I, I had, I've had a list like my whole life of places I want to play. And this year and last year, I've checked some of those off and I've been talking with my team and they're like, well, we just want to check off the whole list. And I'm like, <laughs> like, I wanted to like start crying. I was like, really? Like, oh. this happen and they were like well we want to make it happen and then so it's been it's been really cool I definitely like I, I I told you guys I had no idea when the man called me up to sign a deal <laughs> I it was a telemarketer so that's kind of where I'm at with it it's all just kind of a wild ride and a surprise to me so if you can if you can have one artist you would love to sing with like on stage or even write for that you haven't done so yet who would who would that be right now Big shocker, George Strait. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. There you go. So I'm, I'm assuming he's your favorite artist of all time, or is that? Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure. And I think finally, you know, I have music that's out and some of it's heavily pop influenced and different things, but it took me really getting into this and realizing, you know, and I love the music that I have out um because I know a lot of my fans you guys love that and I know some of you have even said to me like wait a minute you're going in a different direction and it is a different direction but I want you guys to really get to know me um I feel like none of my music so far has really told you anything about me and I just want I mean I'm a farm girl uh, I grew up riding horses rodeoing at 4-H FFA that kind of thing and but I'm also still going to have that fun aspect. I want people at my shows to be clapping, singing, hooting, hollering. If they want to yell, giddy up, yeehaw, whatever, let's have fun. I don't, I don't want to be boring. That's for sure. Um, I've always been really inspired by Garth Brooks on stage and his energy. And I try to bring that energy myself. I, as I was told by someone the other day, apparently I can't stay still. And I'm, <laughs> I love to be all over the place. And I, that's, to me, if I go to a show, I want to be entertained. And I hope that I can bring that energy to rodeos and to stages all across the country for people. Um, that's my goal. I just never want to be boring. Um, and so I just want to have fun. And I've got, I'm full of energy. I think you guys probably can tell. So I yeah. stage and I'm like, let's, let's have fun. And <laughs> Yeah, who who would want their performer to just stand still on stage? Though, honestly, you know, I think you know, that's that's a big thing to get your crowd involved. And absolutely, I was say, um, the only one that comes to my mind is Tom Petty. That's the only one I think is that's not going to be very energetic on stage or something. So, <laughs> well, uh, yeah, Howie, he's not moving around too much anymore. And no, he's not. <laughs> no, he's not. <laughs> I wasn't sure why you brought up Tom Petty. <laughs> I was just thinking because I've I've actually seen his concerts before and. And the guy didn't move around. Really? Yeah. Um, and forgive me if we asked you this before, Taylor, when we had you on last time, but your background with music, was it was it always just country based or was there other stuff involved in that too? Like did you listen to other things growing up? Um, yeah, no, I love all types of music. Um, I think if somebody got in my car, just if me saying my favorite artist is George Strait, but if they rode with me, they'd be like, Well, this girl's really all over the place. <laughs> Riding in my car, you might listen to a George Strait song, then it might be bluegrass, and then it might be rap, and then it might go to rock and roll, and it, it's all over the place. Um, I honestly don't really have a genre of music that I don't like. I uh, really, I, I love all kinds of music. I played uh, sports growing up and then college sports and stuff, and country music, I love you, but I just can't work out and just get on my, like, it's just, <laughs> I've got to have some feet and different things and country music works sometimes for that but I'll tell people mm -hmm. like played sports and doing that stuff I listened to all kinds of genres growing up um definitely influenced uh heavily by rock and roll um I've gotten to write some rock songs but I had a cut in rock music um had some pop cuts I had my very first pop cut this year um I don't know if, if you guys are watching TikTok it went viral on TikTok for us it's called fake friends and that was really, really a cool one for me because, I mean, 
I like brought that to that pop artist and immediately I was like, listen, I have an idea. It's not a country song. I can't sing it. You've heard my accent. It ain't going to work. I said, but it's going to you and I really want you to sing it. And I'd had that idea for so long, but I hadn't got to sit down and write with the pop artist. So I was like all excited about it. And so it, it worked out, but I also, like I said, I had the rock cut. Um, Joan Jett is one of my favorite singers of all time. So big Joan Jett fan, Poison. Um, mm. So that kind of thing. And a lot of people, it's one of those things for me. Um, I'm all over the place. I think taking the different influences in music, but I think that's also why I love songwriting because I get to write with artists from all different genres of yeah. music by doing that. And right now um, I was actually reaching out uh, not a couple hours ago to a guy actually once I got my tooth fixed you know <laughs> um, and I, he's a rock he's heavily influenced with rock music and I was like listen um, I want to work on a new project and I'm constantly wanting to bring in people that have a different background and it's good to write in all genres but I think it's been really helpful to me in the last few years to write with people from all different music backgrounds because I've learned so much to bring in to my music and to bring into music that I'm writing. And I'm like, this is cool. Like, I really enjoy it. Mm -hmm. um, George Strait will always be my favorite, but I think I would add my, I'd love to do like, you know, the, the CMT Crossroads, Joan Jett, if you're listening, I'm ready for it. <laughs> there you go. And, and, and you answered the qu next question I was going to follow up with on that. I was like, and with all your different genres that you listen to and that you were influenced by, like that's got to open up so many different songwriting avenues for you. And you just, and you just said that, like, you, you know, you can write rock songs, you can write pop songs, you can write country songs. Now I want to hear you write a rap song though, Taylor. That's, that's gotta be next on your list. I got an invitation to rap. We all get ready. Oh, <laughs> I can't wait to hear that. I, I was actually, I jokingly, he like reached out and he was like congratulating me on the songwriting stuff. And I was like, thank you about with Cheap Girl because we're pretty good friends. And he's a very successful artist. And I like teased him. I was like, want a rewriting one? And he was like, that's a done deal. Let's pick a date. And I was like, so I walked in and I told my husband, I go, oh, I'm writing a rap song. <laughs> and like, what? And I was like, yep, it's happening. And he was like, oh my. <laughs> that's incredible. We, I can't wait to hear that. That's going to be, that's going to be fantastic. Your husband probably looked at you writing a rap song like people look at me at singing a rap song. <laughs> so <laughs> he just started laughing. He was like, "Yeah, okay." He was like, "We'll see about that." And I mean, he knows some of the guys that are really good friends of mine, and he he's like teased me before, like, "Yeah, you're gonna write a song with them," like jokingly. And so when I walked in, I was like, "Guess who I'm writing a song with?" He was like, "Are you serious?" <laughs> Oh, that's great. So when it comes to writing songs for folks, um, like what is your process in regards to reaching out to people that you're interested in writing songs to? I'll just, a lot of times I'll just reach out and send them a message. All they can do, my, my policy is all they can do is say no. And thankfully most people have always said yes. Sweet. Um, and I've been really, really grateful for that. I just, I love being able to co-write. Co-writing is one of my favorite things because I like to help people bring their stories to life, especially I find sometimes with artists, they might have a story and I like helping them put it into a song. Um, sometimes they'll be telling me something, just how we're having a conversation here and I'm writing notes down and everything else. And then I'll look and we'll be like mid conversation. I'll be like, so I got a whole verse and I got a chorus done. What do you think of this? And they'll be like, what? And I'm like, oh yeah, you were giving me some really good material. So. Oh, wow. <laughs> That's, that's amazing though. I mean, it really is. It's just um, like, I don't know, do you, I, and I know you're one to like really look back on things and realize, wow, look where I, look where I am right now. And look what I've like, what, look what I'm accomplishing and look what's happening this year. Uh, obviously, and like, you're probably at that point in time where you're still kind of like pinching yourself. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And and with that being said, when when do you feel like you're going to get to that point where, oh, yeah, I am good. I am that good. And uh, and it's game on now. Let's go out and conquer this thing. I don't know. I feel like my personality, I'm probably still going to be like, wait a second. Like, is this happening? <laughs> it just doesn't feel real. Uh, it's I don't know. Uh, you know, I went to school for medicine, um, was a kinesiology major, studied working, uh, 
specializing with knees and stuff. And so giving that up, I think a lot of people were like, well, I know a lot of people that knew me thought I was crazy um, and told me I was crazy. And I was like, yeah, I'm probably really crazy, but I'm going to do this. And at first I was like, I'm crazy. This is probably a terrible idea. I could have a really successful job, career, like maybe I shouldn't be doing this. And it's finally now, like, I feel like I'm just really accomplishing everything I wanted to. And basically what I came to Nashville to do, um, Mm -hmm. it's, that was my goal. Um, and hopefully it continues. I, you know, I like just said, if one person would listen to me, I had no idea this many people would listen and this many artists would want to write. And I've uh, recently had some of the just co-writers, um, reach out and writers that I grew up listening to their songs that they wrote that I would just thought if they would reach out and ask me to write would be just a dream and it's happening. And, artists are like hey like when do you want to write and I'm like you want to write with me okay <laughs> so, so, so I, I heard you just mention uh Nashville there um pretty sure last time we talked to you you were living in North Carolina did you move to Nashville now yeah I've been in Nashville okay who am I am I goofing her up with somebody else Hallie no I thought she was in North Carolina too but yeah go ahead Taylor yeah I'm from North Carolina probably a lot of the pandemic I spent with family mm-hmm. um, okay when I get to where I'm writing and I'm obviously playing shows and stuff that I was doing prior there, you know, there were Thanksgivings and stuff. I didn't get to come home and things. So having this extra time to spend with family has been amazing. Um, honestly, really enjoy it. I believe when you guys and I did our interview last, I don't know that I was married then yet. And I think, I don't think you were, I don't think so. I, we were in the process of, um, getting our house and everything and just stuff so we were living at that point we did move back um home with family in the process of just getting everything when we were in between buying a house as far as that goes um but i was in we obviously met in nashville and we were there prior and then just trying to save up and get everything to get straight for Mm -hmm. a house got that all straight now but that makes sense because i had i was thinking about it i was like i don't even think i was married Gosh, guys, it's been a while. <laughs> yeah, I know. It has. I know. We need to stay in touch a little bit more, Taylor. <laughs> well, I, I remember um, a few things we were sharing on Facebook for too about different um, awards you were nominated for, and um, you know, I, I didn't see any results on any of that. I think I think we we did end up seeing that you got in the top five for something. Wasn't that a was that a songwriting thing, Howie? Do you remember that? I don't remember exactly what it was, but I thought there was uh, something. I do remember our top five for something as well. I do, but now I'm drawing a blank. (laughs) You you get so many awards you don't even remember, Taylor. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, See, this is is the vision that I picture when Taylor goes up and receives her Grammy for best um, songwriting of the year or something like that. Uh, I can just see, I can just see you like being all beside yourself and not believing. I can't believe I just got this or uh, I can't believe I'm, you know, living this dream. I mean, it's just amazing. I, I, I actually appreciate that in people like yourself because uh, it just shows that you're, you're in it more for, I mean, you're in it for passion. Yeah. You're in it to make some money, obviously, because you want to live, but but you're also in it for just a pure passion, like Troy said, you know, and it's, that's really awesome to see. Yeah, I definitely am. One of my favorite quotes, I don't know if you guys like Cobra Kai or the karate. Oh yeah. (laughs) Yeah. I love uh, Mr. Miyagi has the quote there with one of the karate kid movies. uh, He who works for passion is more happy than he who works for money and different things. And that was one thing I remember when people are like, you're going to leave medical like working in the medical field and go do music. And I was like, I'm going to go work for my passion and I'm going to make it my job. And that was what I wanted to do. And it's been so rewarding. Um, I, I really, I love what I do. I love getting to meet my fans, just the people, everything about it. And it's like I said, everything's just been, been wild. Um, and thank you guys so much for sharing that stuff for me. That's, I really appreciate it a lot. That's, yes, means- I mean, we, we love to do that for, for you and for other folks here that cut to take the time because 
like we've had nothing but nice interactions with the people that have come on the show. Everything's been great. Everybody's been great. We've been very lucky with that. Um, real quick with uh, your, when you went from the medical field into the, uh, you know, the music field, did you kind of made that decision on your own or was somebody kind of helping you push towards that? That was just all you? That was me. Um, I was writing songs where I went to school, Shenandoah University. They had a big music program. And quite frankly, when I wasn't taking my main core classes, I loved to take classes in their conservatory. Um, it was awesome. And I probably, <laughs> probably should have realized that was what I was enjoying the most, even when I was there. Not saying I didn't. I mean, I was very successful in my classes um, in the medical field. But I was always happier when I was sitting around playing guitar, writing songs with friends there at college. And I always found that's where I was happiest. And what happened, I, I don't regret what I did because the people I met at Shenandoah were how I made the friends in Nashville and got me to where I am today. I started in Nashville and writing songs while I was there and I was meeting people. And that's just kind of where it took off. And I, I started, like I said, meeting people that I was like, wow, this is kind of cool. Okay. Um, but I, for me, it was just, you know, I wanted to do it. And it was in one of those trips though. And he has since passed away, but I was fortunate enough in one of those trips from college, I met a man by the name of Dan Mitchell. Yep. And I Dan remember. Mitchell, yeah, Dan had, um, he's done a lot in the music industry, he managed Johnny Paycheck. He wrote for Alabama and Lou Harris, the whole slew of uh, Mo Bandy, a slew of people. And so it was one of those things. Um, I'm very big in my faith and I thought it was a God thing. And I was very happy um, that he and I got to meet and I, you know, he and I had a plan and I wish he was here right now because that plan's actually, it's like, I'm seeing his vision and plan that he had for me come become real. And I, you know, I hate to say it, he'd probably be disappointed in me and say this, but when he would tell me this plan and all, and, and I knew the artist he had managed and worked with, but I would be like, yeah, right. Like, yeah, that's gonna happen to me, sure. And now I'm like, oh, wow, like this is happening. This is this is really cool. So it's really I, fun. I would, excited. I would say he's anything but disappointed in you. <laughs> <laughs> I would think so. <laughs> yeah. I mean, with, with the way things are going for you, there, there's no way he's disappointed. And and with you mentioning your your faith and uh, believer in God and stuff, uh, I'm sure he sees everything that you're doing as well. Um, and I'm sure he's very proud. Um, I do want to check out this fake friends thing. I didn't see this uh, on TikTok going viral or anything. I, I don't know how I missed that, but I, I didn't see it. I, I'll be honest. I don't follow TikTok a whole lot. Uh, <laughs> yeah. so I, I honestly didn't really have much of a TikTok until that. Oh, I need to get on TikTok. So I've been trying but she put that out there and it had hundreds of thousands of views in like less than a few days. And she was like, um, so she went from not even a hundred people following her on TikTok to 11,000 and like a couple of Oh hours. my gosh. And she was like, Taylor, Taylor, like this is happening. <laughs> I was like, what in the world? So, um, but that was a really, that was a fun kind of experience for me. Um, like I said, it was my first ever pop cut um i grew up a big gwen stefani fan so <laughs> i know like you are all over the place i really was i liked avril lavigne and green day too i mean that's different too but um <laughs> it was one of those things where when we sat down and we got to kind of do this right with this pop song i was like so i was like i have this whole like vision of a song that i've always wanted to write but i can't sing it and i was like <laughs> She was like, you can't sing it. I was like, I don't think it would go over too well with country radio. And she was like, okay, well, I'll do it. And I was like, all right. So I was like. Who is really this? Yeah, I was just going to ask, who is this person that sings? Uh, Loren. It's S-I-E-N-A and then Loren, L-O-R-E-N. Okay. I'll have to look that up. Yeah, like I said, it went uh, really big on there on TikTok for um, really excited uh, is is this somebody you knew or how like, like yeah her and I okay. actually write quite a bit together now she actually is believe it or not you know the pop artist is my one of my co-writers on my put a little more country in your country song nice she, she was sitting there and she goes you know guys I'm gonna have to start working on my Saturday nights and the way she was like, <laughs> making fun I was like shut up <laughs> <laughs> 
Well, that's um, it, it, this TikTok thing is no joke. I mean, I know how he I mean, again, I'm going to go back to one of our former guests here. We spoke with uh, Brandon Davis. I don't know, maybe about two months ago. And this guy just he actually had a passion for music, but it, he didn't feel like he would be able to support his family with just music. He didn't think like, it, you know what I mean? And um, finally, his wife said, what do you really want from life? You know, if you want music, go pick up that guitar and go do it. So she he wouldn't be doing anything on recording, whatever. And finally, he would she would start recording him just kind of doing stuff when she would put him on the spot. And he started she started posting it on TikTok. And next thing you know, this guy blows up. And uh, as I told Diamond Dixie last week, now he's he's going on tour with Tim McGraw next year. Um, so it just I mean, this TikTok thing, like it, it's just amazing to me. Mm-hmm. Just a little social media thing that kids would go on and do dances and stuff like this <laughs> on, you know. And now like he's we're getting real artists out of this. It's just amazing. Like, and 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 is this is this how she started as well? Yeah, she's had some stuff out before, but yeah, this is like her first um, album release that she's done. And she was like, it was one of, like I said, the first video, she didn't even have a hundred followers, had just joined TikTok. And she like, she posted this, she had no idea. I'm like, what are you doing? Like, how do we do this again? Like, let's like, keep this up, you know, like, I- but we have a lot of cool stuff uh, in mind planned TikTok wise for uh, my uh, upcoming single, because I don't know, I just kind of want to be funny with it. I mean. I think like it's, anytime you can kind of just put like the fried chicken. I, I really plan <laughs> to put on the overalls and play the role. And see it's oh, this is going to be good. This, if I'm it. not, I got to make, I got to make sure I'm following you on TikTok. I don't know if I am or not, but I got to make sure I am. That's going to be good. Um, yeah. I mean, that, that whole process, that whole take, that, that just blows my mind every time I hear a story about it. I, I don't know when I'm going to get over that where it doesn't surprise me. But it still surprises me to this day. Like, yeah, and just, I actually, and I, and I just heard this on the radio. Uh, I actually, yeah, I just heard it on the radio recently about like how times have changed. Because in the past, you would have to drive down the highway and you'd look at a billboard, and that's how you got your information. Um, but today, it's like really the biggest billboard out there available is social media. And, uh, and it's just a matter of, man, if you can learn how to master the art of social media when it comes to advertising, I mean, it, it just reaps reward after reward. And, and I'm curious uh, with you, Taylor, you know, how do you um, utilize social media to kind of get your notoriety out there? Um, yeah, it's been one of those things. So I actually... I used to do social media marketing and stuff and still kind of help with people. So that's something I really enjoy. Um, it's actually one of the first things, how I met the people at Big Tent initially where I like to write out a lot was because I came on and helped them with social media marketing. That was one of my first like Nashville jobs to help me, you know, the many jobs of musicians. Um, <laughs> help get through. So I, yeah, I was a musician who works many jobs to try and try and make everything work. But uh I did the social media. And so doing that though, um, I kind of learned a lot in that, but I definitely, uh, you know, using it and utilizing it correctly. Um, I think Jeep girl, going back to that, if you look at Jeremy on TikTok and how he utilized TikTok to promote his song with Jeep girl, yeah, it was, and so just to be able to take that resource and share it with so many people. And for me, even as the writer on these songs just getting to sit back and watch how many people are watching it per minute in in an hour it's like looking at it it's like wow like this is nuts and you just don't think about that many people like looking and I was like wow that many people want to listen to something I wrote like okay this is pretty cool thanks um you know it's crazy uh I'm pretty sure on on both of those songs, uh, there was more people listening to those than living where I grew up <laughs> all together. So I'm like, wow, like this is kind of crazy. Um, but yeah, it is, it's definitely been really cool, um, to be able to use the social media. I definitely think for artists, um, social media and being able to do that, it's a, it's a tool that you need to utilize. Um, and it's one of those tools now where you can have a song and not be a signed artist and you can still chart and it's it's kind of open it's it's opening up doors for a lot of people and it's kind of changing the game I feel like in the music industry you don't have to have necessarily this 
support that people, if you've got a following on social media and they're on top of it and you can continue to keep them going and have them, then they're gonna, they're gonna make it happen. Um, I know like it's, it hasn't been that long ago, but all of a sudden I had all these kids from Europe. Um, they were liking my music and constantly following. They reached out different things. I even, one of them asked me if I would come talk to their class there. I was like, sure. So I feel like the same thing with them, but it was like this whole group of kids. Well, then all of a sudden I was looking at anything I was a part of. They were making sure things were happening and their whole like, little group and they were tweeting about it and they had all this stuff. And I was like, this is nuts. I was like, these kids live like all the way across the world, like never. And so for me, that was wild. Um, I never expected that. And at first I was like, this is kind of weird. And then I was like, whoa, there's a lot of them. <laughs> and so I was like, okay. And so I was like, hi. And then, so just for that, I kind of got to see on that for my side, like the, the power of social media and how that had worked. I mean, I've never played Europe. Um, I've won awards over there, but I've never got to actually go over and play. And so it's kind of one of those things where I'm, really excited and hopeful to be going over there soon after that but I didn't even realize like the little kids they're telling me and I say little kids they were like middle school age summer high school mostly like middle school I've come to the conclusion my average fan age might be around the age of 12 <laughs> <laughs> so that's okay they buy I, a lot of you got it I mean yeah you gotta you gotta build your fan base somewhere I mean hey, and uh it let's worked face for it. Miley Cyrus right <laughs> <laughs> I mean, let's face it. I mean, probably the majority of the people that listen to music right now are kids. I mean, that, I mean, yeah. I mean, that's that's a big group right there. So absolutely, you want to target that audience. Um, as we were talking here, Taylor, I, I did find your TikTok, uh, and that's the same handle as your Instagram, Taylor Marie Wagner Music. Yes. Uh, so please make sure you follow her there. Follow her on Instagram. Uh, you know, find her on Facebook. Uh, if you need to search her on youtube whatever you want to do she's got some new music coming out um still writing songs while you're releasing this new music i'm assuming right i had uh out yesterday um it's available for pre-order by ariella aspen it's called pixie dust um so that'll be coming out and then i have a couple more songs in the works the artists are i know they're cutting them but they haven't announced they're cutting them yet but i know it and i'm really excited (laughs) couple of them are some bigger artists I don't know I just I'm really excited um for, about those opportunities you know I didn't even realize until the other day I like went to look at something and I was like whoa like today is like my 10th cut and I was like wow there's more coming and so it's that uh, just everything's just kind of a I don't, I, it's a blessing um I just you know I like I said I'm very big in my faith and I'm so thankful for these blessings but I just they're all kind of wow moments for me I uh I don't know, this past year, you know, in the pandemic, it was a rough year in one sense, but for me, it was kind of a year that I, it's been a a year of a lot of like, wow, like this is really happening. Um, Mm -hmm. And so I, you know, like I said, with the stuff internationally, I didn't expect um, my music and stuff to take off there. And I, um, I don't know, I think you guys might've helped share that, but I had won this past year, last past last year. I keep thinking we're still, it's so weird. We're in the new year and we haven't yeah, been in tell it, me about it with me, but, um, you know, this past year I was the female vocalist of the year at the international music awards. And for that, for me, I was just like, wait a second. Like what? I remember what I found out because it was supposed to be live. It was supposed to actually go to the Netherlands for that. And we went, it was a show and so when they like announced it I'm like sitting on my couch crying like did this really happen like it was like one of those moments for me but this year I feel like has been so full of those moments and I'm so grateful just to for the opportunities and just everything kind of happening as has how you said it's been one of those pinch me like moments for like a lot here lately and I'm I don't know it's it's really cool um like I said the new stuff coming out um I'm writing a lot of stuff still um hopefully got a full schedule for song rights, so hopefully the artists like the songs they want to release more but I know for sure we have uh pixie dust and uh two more confirmed cuts on top of that that'll be coming out here in the next few months and uh <laughs> have a feeling there might hopefully hopefully be a few more um summer in the works so I'm really excited you know I mean hey if we hit 
five more this year and we're at 15, great. I'd, I'd love to say it'd be 20. I try to set a goal for myself every year and my goal for last year, I far surpassed. And so I don't know if I need to up my goals. Or, <laughs> I don't know. I didn't even expect to get that many. And I was like, wow, like, okay, we like passed it. And so, um, but I'm hopeful. Uh, I think we're at the point where we can stop worrying about setting goals and just enjoy the ride. Yeah. <laughs> oh. I mean, you're, you're so modest and, and I hope you always keep that modesty because it's, it's, it's an endearing quality of yours. Um, and it, I think it really honestly attracts people to want to work with you. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it's just not something where like, you're feeling like, oh, well, you got to come to me to work with me. Cause I'm the greatest songwriter there is. You're like, you know, I'd really love to work with you. And you're, and you're so modest about it and you're so gracious about it. And like, there's no reason somebody wouldn't want to work with you on that. You know, like, I don't even write songs. I want to write songs. <laughs> 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 but, um, no, Taylor, I mean, it's been great. Um, 2021 was awesome for you. I have no doubt 2022 is going to be even better. Um, just from what we're even talking about here. And if everything goes as planned, um, as long as nothing holds us down this year, pandemic wise, uh, you know, fingers crossed. Um, I expect to really see your name out there and to see great things from you. So, um, we really appreciate your time. Um, if there's anything else you want to get out there before we uh, sign off, uh, go for it. I just want to thank you guys. You guys have been so supportive from the first time I met you guys in here throughout, and it really means the world to me. Um, and I'm so glad to have you guys just in my corner, and I can't wait to share more fun, exciting stuff with you guys. Um, yeah. Just thank everyone who's listening. Um, come to a show i should have shows posted here soon and i might even be near you guys hopefully i hopefully. hope so i hope so when you say you might even be are you are you getting a feel for <laughs> something we don't know well i'm i'm hopeful <laughs> do, do, where, where do you post your shows at typically taylor um typically on my social media pages just okay. overall and so you want to come say hey okay buddy you <laughs> <laughs> look at this one what's his name that's cinch most of my fans like they're 12 so all the little girls know about mr cinch and uh, so we're looking at a puppy dog right now and uh <laughs> yeah for for the audio version i guess you could yeah. say uh... oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> about that duh they're not gonna see it they're probably like what's she doing yeah. Fox giving me kisses y'all since came to visit everybody and say hey all i know all of you guys love to meet him I, he usually comes to shows so does he really that's awesome yeah he will sit up there with me and he oh, loves wow. everybody so that is so neat uh so i'm expecting i'm expecting we're gonna see a song written about him Probably. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, so hey, again, thanks yeah, again. Let's... Yeah, thanks again, Taylor. It, it's always fun to talk with you. And uh, we're going to have to stop making this over a year each time, though. I'm going to have to be honest. Yeah. Yes, please. <laughs> so let's, let's, uh, let's just get your stuff in here real quick again one more time. Taylor Marie Wagner on Facebook. Uh, Taylor Marie Wagner Music on Instagram and TikTok. And uh, look out for some songs she's releasing here, uh, hopefully within the next few months that they'll be ready to roll. And uh, also look for some writing credits coming up this year as well. And hopefully we'll see you out and about. Yeah, sounds good. <laughs> Thank you so much for having me. It's always a pleasure. I love coming on this show. It's awesome. Oh, that's awesome. Well, we appreciate you as well. So thank you. And, uh, and by the way, I think that cracked tooth uh, was just kind of a way to humble you a little bit, just to keep you honest. So, um, so, you know, that's just, if that's the worst thing that you're going to experience this year, you're golden. Yeah. Cause she's not, hum she's not humble enough right no, now. No, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> oh uh, my. Thanks Taylor. Thank you guys so much. Great seeing y'all. Great seeing you as well.